This is the story of why I wear a backwards hat. Today, I'll be reading a common app essay that got me into schools like Northwestern, UMich, Vanderbilt, USC, Georgia Tech, as well as five other schools last year. No long intros today, I know what you're here for, so let's get right into it. Turn Around by Joseph Lee. I have to go. I really have to go. I was two minutes from catastrophe. All I could think about was the bathroom, but I couldn't raise my hand. I was too scared to speak in front of a class of judgmental eight-year-olds. Despite my blather's protests, I continued to sit silently. I wasn't always this way. In kindergarten, I shrieked at my parents when I didn't get my way. I jumped around the room on pizza day. Show and tell was my favorite day of the week. However, my parents, who had immigrated to America via their steadfast determination, taught me the same mentality that had enabled their own success. My father often told me about how his childhood diligence ruined his eyesight, pointing to his thick glasses. Though I'd roll my eyes at this story, I felt the pride he took in persistence, precision, and self-control. Fortunately, this approach also made me slow to act during high school. By waiting for the best opportunities to arise, I missed chances to foster relationships with my peers, teachers, and even my family. During my freshman tennis season, meeting the upperclassmen made me nervous. I was the youngest of the team, a short, small Chinese kid among tall, all-American varsity athletes. I didn't belong. While I was hesitant, my teammates were at ease. Other than following coaches' drill instructions, they did whatever they pleased. I looked for ways to channel their self-assurance. I envied how they moved with a freedom so unfamiliar to me. One thing stood out. They all wore their caps backwards, brims jutting down behind their ears. I'd always worn mine forward, but one day, I impulsively reached up and turned my hat around. It was a small change, but over the following weeks, my hat began to serve as my social crutch. It marked a transition as I walked to practice, from conservative to casual, from deliberate to daring. I felt at home. I was so comfortable, I even started cheering during teammates' matches. Me, cheering! I avoided the spotlight during class, but I welcomed the attention on court. Tennis had always been an escape from my stresses. Now, it was an escape from my own silence. I wore my hat wherever I could, and I noticed changes even outside of practice. In class, I started having fun instead of worrying about calculating every decision or being too loud. Things were imperfect though. Last spring, after a rough practice, my history teacher asked me about the tennis season. I immediately responded, Coach won't listen to me, but he's surprised when we lose. It's horrible. Yeah, I, I actually did say that, okay. My newfound confidence had begun to flirt with arrogance. Word got around quickly. Coach was trying his best and my attack was unacceptable. When I passed my teammates, I could feel every mention of complainer, conceited, and big mouth cut into my spirit. I wasn't proud of myself either. I knew I had to make a mental coach. Although it wasn't easy, my new mindset gave me the courage to knock on his office door. I apologized, taking ownership of my mistake, and promised him to run a lot of sprints. By the end of the season, I had regained his trust. After this experience, I thought twice about my carelessness. I was losing my cautious side. I gained more freedom, but it was brash to completely turn off my self-awareness. In the past, though I'd been uptight, I'd also made sure to be kind. My new aspiration is to combine these two selves. Now I'm always delicately balancing between being careful yet comfortable, firm yet friendly, humble yet honest. Looking ahead, I want to chart a path that honors my desire for both discipline and spontaneity. In college, I look forward to surrounding myself with people who both ground me and hold me accountable. I want a place I'll feel happy calling home regardless of what I'm wearing. Well, that was really cheesy. No cap. I waited three weeks to make that joke. I'm really sorry. Okay. I wouldn't call this essay bad writing, but it obviously wasn't a sophisticated piece whatsoever. Looking back at it now, my essay reads pretty childishly. It feels very simplistic and doesn't feel very mature in the way that you would usually expect. But honestly, I feel like this at the time was my version of the perfect college essay. And the reason for that is because even now, if you ask me to describe myself in about 650 words, I feel like this is almost the exact same way I would tell my story. This is completely my voice. This essay is literally almost 0% filter. I basically wrote the way I would speak. Well, obviously not completely the way I would speak because there would be swears in that, but you get the idea. It is so unabashedly me. I've never written anything in my life before that or since that I feel like has more accurately represented who I am as a person. But looking back at it, it is very cringe, right? I definitely could have done better writing-wise and sophistication-wise, but that's not the point of a college essay. The goal here is just to make the reader know you and understand you the best way possible in a little space that you are given. So whether it's a backwards hat, whether it's a trip to Costco, whether it's a dead bird, the key here is to pick a topic that allows you to express yourself in the best and most true way possible. 
Throw your literary analysis language out the window. Throw your sophistication shit out the window. If huge words and fancy words aren't your forte, I say throw those out the window as well. You don't need that. All you need is your voice on the piece of paper and then turn it in. That's all you need. And I say, if you create an essay that packs as much personality into the paper as possible, I say that's an amazing essay, even if it's a bit cheesy. Well, really cheesy. I don't want to make this video too long, so if you want more advice on college application essays, and you want to see some of the essays that help me get into MIT, which by the way, isn't on the comment app, so that's why I didn't mention them. I'll put a link in the description and in the top comment. I'll also put like a card or whatever it's called in the top corner here. But yeah, with that, I wish you guys the best of luck on those applications. I hope you guys get the results that you want. And yeah, stay anxious everyone, and have a good day. Peace.